Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. Today's video is showing the results of different intake manifolds used um, that were dyno tested on a set of Pro Max 290 heads on this 496 big block mule. Um, hydraulic roller, 247, 253 duration, 110 lobe separation, 630 lift. Um, with these Pro Max heads, it had about 11 to 1 compression ratios, tick over actually, but all of them done with pump gas with a splash at like 110 just to be safe. Uh, Pro Systems 10, uh, Pro Systems 1000 CFM 4150 carburetor. And I'm going to go through the intakes first. Sorry, it's a voiceover over these pictures, but I just don't have the intakes here anymore just to do them as a normal video to show you. Um, in hindsight, we I probably should have spent more time trying to do some videoing while we were doing the testing, but it just didn't happen. So we got to deal with what you got to deal with. But anyway, this is the first one. This is Elderbrock 4540 is complete stock. This is what it looks like. Um, you can get them from Summit, obviously, here. Um, anyway, this is the, one of the ones that was used. Let me show you the others. Here was the next intake used. It's your basic Elderbrock Performer RPM Air Gap Oval Port. Nothing special about it, except for, I will say, we tested two. So we have one that was contested that was completely stock. Then the other one that was port matched. However, it's port matched to an oval port, and these are roval, so it's not an exact match, and I'll show you in, in just a minute. This is the YN Stealth. This is the other one we we're testing. Now, you can't tell from the picture, but it is actually an air gap design. Um, one thing to note about this one, and I should have taken a picture of this, of all the intake manifolds that were tested, those openings were actually the smallest. As a matter of fact, I think they probably could have port matched to a peanut port head. So they're really, really small. I was kind of curious to see how that would do for power production, which we'll get to that later on. But yeah, as far as the exits, I should say, um, to the go to the head, really, really small. Here's the next intake. This is the Brodix. It's the HV2017. And I tried to find a picture on Summit, but Summit, I've ordered it from Summit before, but it's not on their website anymore. I don't know why. Um, I will say it's by far the most expensive of the manifolds that were tested. I mean, I think we spent $600 at the time, but I like obviously you can see here it's $624. You might say, what well, makes it so expensive? Well, it comes CNC port matched. And Brodix from the factory, they do it in a CNC machine, and it's port matched to an oval, which we'll show you even though these heads are roval. The other catch is it leaves this, uh, it sounds great, but it leaves a CNC step right where the machine actually ends. And the step's probably about 100,000. So you, it might be matching to the heads, but further into the manifold, there's, there's definitely a step. This one also is pretty low as far as height-wise. It's one of the shorter ones. But yeah, it's very expensive. This one's just a photo representation because I could not find it. I'm fairly certain this one's out of production. This was a performer, and it said 2-0 from Elderbrock. Um, it's very old. It was not, I mean, of all the intake manifolds, you could definitely tell it was the oldest. It was completely stock too, but it looked very, very similar to this one that I have pictured. I mean, very, very similar. Um, it just said 2 0. And I know, and I know someone's going to say, well, they make a performer RPM 2 0. It wasn't that. It had an opening like this. So, anyway, we tested that one too. Uh, again, nothing modified on that. But anyway, let's get the results now. Okay, before we get to the results, I told you I would talk about this. So I'm going to about the poor match. So, these are the Pro Max, and these are obviously dirty because I'm working on them. Uh, they were completely stocked, by the way, when we used them. They weren't modified at all. But anyway, this is how their openings are. This is their, they call it an oval, but it's really, it's a roll. This is similar to what AFR has on theirs. If you do like the Brodix and anything else, their openings look like this. Um, when I talk about the intake manifolds were port matched, like the Elderbrock, it was port matched to, to this design. Same with the Brodix, because it was port matched to this, which is what the Brodix is. And if you notice, when I put it up there, they don't fit the same. And you're like, well... It's bigger than the heads. Actually, it's because I'm holding it up crappy. But then, truthfully, this opening is smaller than that. So that oval, essentially, if I squared this oval, keeping the dimensions as far as width and uh, height the same, and just squared it, you would have that. So now what I'm trying to say is, when the intake manifolds were, the two that were port matched, the Brodix and the um, Elderbrock, they were this size, which is smaller than that size. Just wanted to point that out first so you guys wouldn't get so confused on that deal. But none of them were port matched to this. None. They were port matched to an oval. Which, in probably next week's videos, I'm going to do a, just a whole bunch of, a, the whole throwing in a whole bunch of different things. Like different manifolds, how they responded with different heads. Because of all the heads tested, we tested six different heads. 
Um, we tested many manifolds on it. Um, we're gonna see about which manifolds, like um, what the differences was, like which was the Brodix HV 2017, which we used on this one, was it better actually on the Brodix? Um, because it was port match for that. But anyway, that's a later video, but I wanted to get that out of the way. Now to the results. If you have a hard time seeing this, which I imagine most of you probably will because you're looking at this on your maybe your phone, you could purchase this book. It's not cheap because it's spent a lot of money on dyno testing, but you can go to my website, wengines.com, and there's a link to my online store, and you can purchase this, and all the information is in the book. Um, so you can purchase there. And also the past test, too. It's not just this test. It's all of them. But anyway, let's get to it. All the engine specs are also in here, too. So here's the first one. This is with the 454-0 intake and the Pro Max 290 heads. And you've probably seen this one before when I compared it with some of the other heads. It made 678.6 horsepower, which is pretty good. And it looks like 631 torque, which is really good, too. Um, so that's it. And don't worry, I'm going to show an overlay in the end. Now, for the next intake, this was the air gap. The air gap only made 667 or 668. So it was down about 10 on the horsepower. Torque, you're like, oh my gosh, the, the dual planes make more torque. Not at peak, it doesn't. It made 634. That's a gain of two foot pounds of torque. So you lost about 10 horsepower and gained two foot pounds of torque if you're just talking about peaks. Next intake. And don't, I'm going to show you the overlay to make better, way better sense. This is the Brodix one. This is the one that was CNC port matched. Um, definitely the most expensive one. It's also a much shorter height than that air gap. Remember that too. It makes 664. So it's only down four horsepower from the air gap. And torque, as far as peak torque, is 627. So yeah, it's down on torque too, as far as that. But wait till you see the overlay on this. But in all fairness, even though this one is the most expensive, it is much shorter height. So if you're trying to not use a cow hood or something like that, and you have hood clearance issues, of all the manifolds besides that Performer 2.0, this one's the, low, the second lowest height. That Performer 2.0, I think, is actually the same height. Um, so if you're wanting to get something that actually fits underneath your hood without using a cow, even though this is, I'll tell you right now, it's not the best Performer, but it did really good, that might be your choice, even though it's also expensive. Going on. This was the Edelbrock Performer 2.0, and it did bad. I'm not even gonna lie. Wait till you see the overlay. It's bad everywhere. You're like, no, it'll be great down low. No, it's not. It's bad everywhere. 608 horsepower torque um, comes in at 589. So, and I know somebody like, well, I bet it's better down low. Wait till you see the overlay. Because everybody gets this idea that, you know, those performer intakes, those ones are so much better down low. They're great for towing. No, this one was just bad everywhere. And then our last one. But this one kind of shocked me. This is the wine, or the ported, did I put the wine in here? I swear I did, it's probably the next page. This one is the uh, Edelbrock port matched, and it made actually slightly less than the non-port matched, and about the same foot pounds of torque. I thought I had the air gap, I guess I didn't. Let me double check real quick. I know it's in the overlay, so I'm not worried too much, but I'm, no, I'm talking about doing it. Yeah, there it is, no, I guess I didn't. Well, we'll go to the overlay. This will give a better picture anyway. Here has all the intakes. I guess I forgot to print out the Wyand Stealth one. But it's in here, so we'll get through that. So all these gobbledygook lines will make better sense over here in just a second. So the red line, this is the Performer RPM air, that's air gap that's been port matched, which you could just barely see. It's this one right through here. The blue line which is also very hard to see here, is the air gap non-port matched. And if you look, so we'll just do port match, non-port matched. We, we could kind of almost trace them. Now, granted, they're different. They're the same manifold, but same manifolds can have slight variances. So if you look at this, they're tracking pretty much along the same, and everybody's real close here. And even though we'll just, they're, everybody's kind of close here too. They're really close. They just, they don't really, except for there at the end, you see that port match one's down, but that's not there. So besides at the end, which is about 6,500 RPM, or well, I guess 63 because we cut this one off, they're close. They're almost the same. This black one is the 454.0, which you're like, why didn't it start here? Well, we, we, this was one of the first manifolds we put on. We didn't pull the engines down as low back then. But then I was like, oh, the people can complain that we didn't pull it far enough down to see what it would do. 
Well, here's your 454.0. And if you notice, it's down considerably to the um, dual planes in this range. But then once you get to about here, which looks like about 47 to 5,000, it's right there with it. And then really you can see it jump up at, looks like 5,600 RPM. It's really getting way out there. So I will say I've had several, and you would say, well, that air gap then is the way to go. I've had several customers that have switched over and put the 454O intake on or 454R intake on, and their grass probably would look just like this too, and went to the track and were faster, even though it's only, it's up like 10 horsepower, but down so much here. And even though they might have a 3000 stall converter, it's still faster. I mean, it's consistent. I, I've never had someone call me up that I've sold one of these two and gone slower that way. And I had this other guy, and I hope he's, he's watching this video. He's like, well, you you said the 454Os are, would be better, and in this case, 454Rs would be better for a boat engine that was doing, that's um, 5,400 RPMs. But he was also a 540. So remember, this engine's only 496. If you shift, if you put this on a larger engine, this whole thing shifts down. So all these gains here go here, and most likely you'll have the, the 454O intakes going to be better. Um, at a lower RPM than what there was with this because then it becomes an airflow demand issue. So you're like, well, no, those make more velocity and torque. Yeah, at a certain point, though, it's still not feeding enough air. These dual planes are, and you got to have the air. So on a bigger engine, uh, these results might not be the same. So vice versa, if you did a 468, there's a good chance that that uh, 454O really won't take off till even further in our RPM range. But anyway, let's get to the other intake that was on there. This purple line's a Y and Stealth, and this one like, really did shock me. Although it's an air gap design, got its things cut down, I'm telling you, the openings um, were very, very small. Like, super small. And it did suck down here. So if you look, this is the purple line. Um, it was below all the other ones. But look, this is what I mean, too. If you were comparing this to the, the air gap, um, it's to the, sorry, the single plane, look, if we trace the lines, this one would have been better to this lower RPM, which obviously we didn't do, but we'll just compare it from where it is. It's only better there, which is 46, and not by much. And then look, the the, the single plane's better everywhere else than that uh, dual plane. So if you do a single plane versus that dual plane, no, there's no way, it's not better. Um, it's only just a smidge there. And really, if you, and that's the smidge better being the single plane. So yeah, um, that's, that's a weird one. Although it looks bad, but it ain't got nothing on this one. The Elder Brock Performer 2.0, look at this one. This one sucked. I told you it sucked. It sucked. And like, well, it'll be better down low. This is the lowest RPM. Well, the other dual planes beat it. This is the Brodix one, which we'll get to in a minute. But look how bad that is. It's horrible. That's its torque line compared to all the rest. It's bad. Now let's get to the Brodix one. And this is the most expensive one. You can see how close it is. This is the green line. Now, yes, it's down at the lower RPMs here, but then it kind of gets it gets hung up in it, and it kind of stays with it. So it's right there the whole way. Besides down low, I mean, it's still better than the Y and Stealth and better than that Elbrock um, um, 2.0. It's also better than the 454.0, but if you're looking for hood clearance, it's really only worse at the lower RPM. So say it looks like 4,600 down than the others. The rest, then it's, it's relatively close. But anyway, there's your good comparison. Hopefully it gets some ideas on it. And if you'd like to see, get a better picture of this, then uh, of course, buy the book. Anyway, guys, remember, I'm no Superman. You guys take care.